Hello everybody, today your boy Kfic is going to be counting down his top 10 rides at Cedar Point. But before we get into this, I do have a few disclaimers. I did not get on Corkscrew, Blue Streak, Cedar Creek Mine Ride, and Top Thrill Dragster because this Dragster was closed and the other ones I didn't feel like waiting for. So, without further ado, let's get into the list. Next up on our list, we have the one, the only, the great Woodstock Express. I mean, this ride is just so good. Okay, I'm kidding. It's a kitty coaster, but like, it's a decent kitty coaster. Um, I'm not sure why I wanted to go on this in any way, because um, it was like my one trip to Cedar Point, and I decided to go on this instead of Blue Streak. But me and my friend rode it for like no reason, but it was okay. Next up on our list, we have. Ruguru and okay, so for Ruguru, I think this ride is so so underrated. Like, I don't like it that much, but it's not painful or rough or anything. Like, people are like, Oh, I hate Ruguru, it's so bad. Like, those people are overreacting, it's not even that bad. It is honestly pretty fun. That incline loop is also really forceful, so I don't know what people are talking about, but it is. Just a B&M floorless, and it doesn't have a zero G roll, which is like the best part of most other ones. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about Ruguru. <laughs> Next up on our list, we have Raptor, and I mean, this ride is kind of overrated in my opinion. Like, come on, how are you supposed to like just think this is like one of the best B&M inverts? I've only ridden three, but it doesn't come close to Montu in any way, and it's nowhere near a Batman clone even. Like, a Batman clone! That's so bad. Like, it just doesn't hold up to the rest of the coasters at Cedar Point, so, yeah. Alright, from now on, me and Liam Games will be finishing this video. Same. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Liam Games, and uh, go like and sub to my channel. Uh, we got 16 subscribers right now, and the profile picture is uh, an MLB The Show cover. All right, back to this video. Um, so, what do you think about Gatekeeper? Um, I think it's a very mid ride. It, it's I probably won't ever go on it again. And this is our combined list. So yeah, I think it also is a pretty mid ride. Like I didn't think there was too much airtime or anything on it. Like there, and it was really forceless in my opinion. And yeah, there was there was it, there was like no force at all. But there was this one part that like you just kind of feel like a little push. Yeah, you'll feel a little push, but that's about it. All right, next up on our list we have Val Raven. This is a B and M dive coaster, so it's not that crazy. It's a one trick pony. Like the only thing that's good is that drop, but um. There's only a few other good elements on the ride. Liam, what do you think? Um, I really like how the coaster um kind of it just gives you one like tiny airtime hill, and I like how it kind of hangs you on the drop. But that's like kind of all the coaster. It's it's not my favorite coaster. Once again, yeah, nothing too crazy. Next up on our beautiful list, we have a uh, drum roll, please. Millennium Force! Woohoo! Okay, anyways, this ride is so, so good. I mean, it's just so tall and it's like a long ride. Even though people call it Millennium Forceless, that is all cap. Um, and there's some good airtime on the ride, and it's, it is a lot of overbank turns, but that doesn't matter because it's really fun. What about you, Liam? Um, I feel that it is forceless. Well, some people have wrong opinions. Alright, folks. Um, next up on our list is Magnum XL200. Now, this ride just looks beautiful on the shoreline of Cedar Point, And it doesn't look like it would give that much airtime, but I like the sound of the lift hill, so that's good. And the first half is like a smooth little hyper. And then you get to the second half, and it's like, Ooh! Ah! Oh, like the airtime is just insane. And I'm sure Liam would agree with me on everything I say. I do and don't. I think it's beautiful on the shoreline, 
but I think that once you get to the end of the coaster, that's that's all that's good. The end of the coaster. I think that Millennium Force is a better coaster in like overall. I just like the 300 foot drop on that, but um, I I don't really like this coaster overall, but it's beautiful on the shoreline. Next up on our list, we have Maverick. Now, this is the itty-bitty, only, like, 100-foot-tall coaster, but it is, like, more intense than, like, Millennium Force, which is, like, 300 feet. But that doesn't... Size doesn't matter. Um, anyways, like, this ride has a crazy first drop and a ton of airtime on that first drop, and then the launch in the middle of the ride is so powerful, and the transition out of it is so powerful. It's just, like, oh. Uh, yeah, and please stop making that. Ugh. Okay, but I like the launch a lot. I think after the first drop, you get a ton of airtime. Like, it's almost like, ooh. But that's all I got. I'm a Barbie. Oh, whoops, whoops, wrong place. Anyways, Anyways. what are you doing? Okay. Whatever. Next up, we got Steel of Vengeance. I'm gonna start us off here. Um, this coaster is like, ooh, ah, Kaden, don't you dare say that. But um, okay, so I love this coaster. It's it might be the best coaster in the world. Um, that I've ridden at least. But um, the night ride's insane. You get so much airtime, and I love all the inversions. Now we're gonna hand it off to Kaden. I mean, a night ride is just simply incredible with all the lights inside the structure. I mean, it's sure to leave you breathless. And when you go over all six airtime hills in a row at the end, it's like, oh, ah, I told you not to say that. <laughs> what? Ever. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. No.